Being biblically spiritual. Being biblically spiritual is a collection of short teachings that focus on the practical application of some of the spiritual truths found within the scriptures of the Bible. In no way should this be considered an exhaustive list, nor should it be considered the only way to spiritually apply these biblical truths. We hope that you find simple keys that will encourage and inspire your Christian faith and daily spiritual walk with God. How to Pray Audiobook Introduction Prayer is universal among the nations of the world, although it is often found in different religions and practiced in different ways, the fact remains that mankind is drawn inexorably to pray. The reason for this is that man is primarily a spirit being, who lives in a body and has an eternal soul. Man came from God, and it is back toward God that we are drawn through the exercise of prayer. This audiobook will lay some foundations about the basic fundamentals of prayer, a foundation that I encourage every person to build upon themselves. The ability to grasp and understand any subject is maximized through repetition, so I encourage you to listen all the way through to the end multiple times to achieve the greatest spiritual benefit of this teaching. God bless. John Nolan Dad's Uni Principal Scripture Reference In this manner therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Matthew chapter 6 verses 9-13 our principal scripture reference is commonly known as the Lord's Prayer, as it was this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. We will look more closely at this prayer in a later chapter. Quotable quotes. Prayer is the exercise of drawing on the grace of God. Oswald Chambers. What is prayer? Genesis chapter 4 verse 26. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born and he named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Prayer in its simplest form is basically calling upon God for help. In whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, we come to God because He alone is Almighty and has power to do things that we cannot. We come seeking His assistance through the act of prayer. Scripture Reference Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7 even them I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Quotable quotes. Prayer is nothing else than being on terms of friendship with God. Teresa of Avila Who do we pray to? John chapter 14 verse 6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We pray to God our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ his Son. Jesus Christ came to reveal God, our Heavenly Father, to mankind. Mankind came from him and walked with him in the beginning, but through the deception of Satan in the Garden of Eden, mankind lost that daily sense of communion with God. The inner nature of man became perverted and sinful as we fell under the control of Satan, and our thoughts and lives became selfish and carnal as that fallen nature manifested in our daily lives. Through faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and by yielding to His Lordship in our lives, we receive forgiveness of all of our sins and are accepted back into God's family and have access to God renewed through faith and prayer. Through Jesus Christ we can now come into God's presence in prayer with confidence because we have our past forgiven and our conscience cleansed by the Holy Spirit. Scripture Reference Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 to 26 Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22 let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. 
quotable quotes. Prayer is the raising of one's mind and heart to God, or the requesting of good things from God. St. John Damascene How do you physically pray? Here are just some of the ways to pray that are found in the Bible. Praying sitting down Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Praying standing up. Mark chapter 11 verse 25. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Praying while walking. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 35. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Praying while bowing our head. Exodus chapter 34 verse 8. So Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. Praying while lifting up our hands toward heaven. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 8. I desire therefore that the men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Praying while kneeling down. Luke chapter 22 verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed. Praying while lying down on the ground. Matthew chapter 26 verse 39. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed saying, O oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless not as I will but as you will. We often enter into prayer when faced with overwhelming circumstances, in situations beyond our control. It's not always possible to gain control of our emotions at these times, and so we see that some of these ways of prayer are more extreme than others. It's important to know that God already knows your circumstances, because He is all-knowing and he understands why we sometimes come to him in an emotional state. It doesn't matter how you physically go about praying, but what matters is that you do pray. Quotable quotes. Prayer lays hold of God's plan and becomes the link between his will and its accomplishment on earth. Amazing things happen, and we are given the privilege of being the channels of the Holy Spirit's prayer. Elizabeth Elliot. What should our attitude be in prayer? Psalm chapter 24 verses 3 to 5. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. It is important for us to humble ourselves and prepare our hearts, before we enter into God's presence through prayer. God is not to be trifled with or treated the way we treat our fellow man. We are not on the same level as Him because He is our Creator, He is holy, all-knowing, all-seeing, and almighty. Although He welcomes us into His family as children of God, we should never forget that He deserves our worship, honor and praise. Asking His forgiveness and cleansing often and continually yielding our lives to Him, enables his process of transformation to continue and ensures the channels of prayer stay open between us. Simple Keys to Success in Prayer Faithfulness in Prayer Luke chapter 18 verse 1 Then he spoke a parable to them, that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Faithfulness in prayer is a wonderful habit to develop as it transforms our hearts daily, as we see God's goodness in our lives and provides many answered prayers. Praying in secret. Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. When we separate ourselves from the distractions of life, we are released to enter into a beautiful relationship with our loving Heavenly Father in prayer. Praying in faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. From this scripture, we learn three vital keys to prayer. First, God is there. Second, 
He wants to reward you. Third, you must seek him earnestly in prayer. Quotable quotes. Any concern too small to be turned into a prayer is too small to be made into a burden. Corey Ten Boom. Four biblical types of prayer. First Timothy chapter two verse one. Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Number one, supplications. The word supplication comes from the word supply. Supplications ask God to supply specific benefits or needs. Ephesians chapter six verse eighteen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Philippians chapter four verse nineteen. And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Number two, prayers. Prayers are respectful devotion. They can be ordered like saying the Lord's prayer daily, or whatever comes out of your heart each day, as long as they are prayed sincerely and with an expectation of being answered. First Thessalonians chapter one verse two, we give thanks to God always for you all. Making mention of you in our prayers, Acts chapter two verse forty-two, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Number three, intercessions. To intercede is to be an intermediary, or to stand between two parties to help resolve an issue. When we pray to God for others, we are coming to God on their behalf and asking for His mercy in their lives. Intercessions are earnest appeals made on behalf of others. First Samuel chapter two verse twenty-five: If one man sins against another, God will judge him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? Jeremiah chapter twenty-seven verse eighteen: But if they are prophets, and if the word of the Lord is with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts, that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord. In the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem, do not go to Babylon. Number four, giving of thanks. Thanksgivings are expressions of gratitude for the mercies received. Being grateful daily for all of God's goodness is a wonderful attitude to develop in life, and helps us considerably in prayer. Psalm chapter one hundred seven verses eight to nine. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness. And for his wonderful works to the children of men, for he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Psalm chapter ninety-five verses two to three. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms, for the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. Quotable quotes. If your day is hemmed in with prayer, it is less likely to come unravelled. Cynthia Lewis. Ten aspects of prayer found in the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter six verses nine to thirteen. In this manner, therefore, pray: Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's take a look at the individual verses of the Lord's Prayer and the aspects of prayer that they relate to. Number one, our Father in heaven. The aspect of relationship. This is the close, personal, and loving bond we continue to develop with God throughout life. Luke chapter twelve verse thirty-two. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Number two, hallowed or holy be your name. The aspect of reverence and praise. This is the act of verbally thanking God for His goodness and mercy. Psalm chapter fifty verse twenty-three. Whoever offers praise glorifies me, and to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. Number three, your kingdom come. The aspect of purpose.
God's kingdom is partially experienced in the spiritual lives of believers now, but will physically come in all its fullness when Jesus returns. Luke chapter 17 verses 20 to 21. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here, or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Number 4. Your will be done. The aspect of submission. The life of every believer is to be yielded to God's will and choices for their life, no longer living for ourselves, but now living for God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Number 5. On earth as it is in heaven. The aspect of dominion. God created the earth and the heavens and therefore owns them. The rule of the earth was given to mankind but usurped through deception by Satan. God rules in heaven and when Jesus returns will rule again on earth. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1. Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? Number 6. Give us this day our daily bread. The aspect of provision. When man was created in the Garden of Eden, God provided everything he needed for life. This level of provision is restored when we come to Christ. Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Number 7. And forgive us our debts, sins. The aspect of forgiveness. Even as disciples of Jesus Christ, we can at times fall back into sinful actions that are not acceptable to God. When this happens we can come confidently to Jesus and receive forgiveness and cleansing afresh. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Number 8. As we forgive our debtors. The aspect of reconciliation. We are called not only to receive God's forgiveness of our sins, but also to give forgiveness to our fellow man when they sin against us personally. Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 to 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Number 9. And lead us not into temptation. The aspect of protection. Temptation will always be present while we live within a fallen world, but God provides a way of escape for us as His children. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. Number 10. But deliver us from the evil one. The aspect of deliverance. When we yield our life to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit destroys the powers of evil that had dominion over us. This same mighty power is available for all believers to deliver us from the snares that the devil sets for us in life. John chapter 14 verse 30. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. You are of God little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. I would encourage every believer to memorize the Lord's Prayer, and to say it every day, at the beginning of your prayer time. This is the prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples when they asked him to teach them how to pray, and is a prayer that is filled with wisdom and understanding about how we should approach our Father in heaven. God bless. Quotable quotes. Of all the things Christ wants for us, loving him and focusing our attention on him are the most important. Charles Stanley. Final note. For a more advanced teaching on prayer, Please listen to our 10 Things That Hinder Prayer Being Answered audiobook. The Ministry of Dads, Uni Dads Uni is an online ministry based in Australia, 
and is focused on providing simple biblical teaching to assist young men in growing families God's way. All Dad's Uni resources are provided free of charge, and we encourage those who enjoy our teachings to share them freely among family and friends. Dad's Uni can be found online in the following locations. Facebook, Dad's Uni. Instagram, Dad's Uni. YouTube, at Dad's Uni. Website, dadsuni.com. We hope you enjoyed this audiobook and will visit Dad's Uni online regularly to see our latest blogs and updates.